I just got back from one of the most spiritual trips of my entire life. I was in the South African bush for an entire week and there were so many learnings, so many aha moments, so much healing that I decided I wanted to make a video to share some of the most important aha moments that I had while I was there. So it's a little bit of a mishmash today, no specific topic, a whole bunch of things thrown in together, but I think you'll enjoy it. So stay tuned. Hey, my happy shiny puppy army in training. This is Melody Fletcher, author of Deliberate Receiving. Finally, the universe makes some freaking sense. And today I wanna to share with you some of the biggest aha moments and learnings and teachings that I can from my trip last week to South Africa. So this trip to South Africa, first of all, like I said in the intro, it was one of the most spiritual experiences of my, my entire life. And you know, I've spent quite a bit of time down in Peru. I've done ayahuasca San Pedro ceremonies, and those were all amazing and mind blowing. And I'm gonna to continue to go back as long as they serve me. But this was something of a completely different category. And I'll try to describe what I experienced down there because I'm finding that as I'm trying to tell people about you know, what I experienced, that words are completely failing me. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and so you have to really listen for the energy that's being transmitted here because um, it's kind of like somebody saying to you, well, you know, I discovered that it's really just about loving myself. And you wanna go, well, duh. But you might have gotten that on a completely different level and the words can't really um, connotate the different levels at which we can understand something. So sort of keep that in mind. So stepping off of the plane in Johannesburg, I was instantly sort of hit with this energy that was so humbling and so uh, amazing and so raw. Um, to me, you know, Africa, and this was my very first time on the African continent as a whole. Um, so I can only really speak to what I experienced in South Africa and where I was. But to me, you know, this, this had a really, a really old and sort of the, the origin energy, that's, that's how I have to describe it, um, flavor to it, which was different than what I might have expected it to be had I had any expectation. And I always do my best not to have expectations when I go on trips like this, except for the fact that I think it's going to be awesome, and it always is. Um, and so the energy wasn't particularly soothing. It was actually quite raw, which makes sense because it, it's sort of the raw building block energy of creation um, from what I felt. Um, so it really has a tendency, I think, to shake things up to bring things up to, um, it can go into really positive and it can go into a really negative way, but it's definitely gonna do something because there's a lot of it. Um, and, and I felt, you know, what I found around me is a lot of people were getting triggered in different ways. Um, a lot of people were, you know, being opened up in different ways. There was also a tremendous amount of healing going on. And so, you know, I found myself interacting really in a very, childlike way a lot of the time. I was very humbled. Uh, I felt like I, you know, was kind of a baby and like I didn't really know anything. And I was just observing and asking questions and um, doing my best to sort of take it all in. And the first couple days I was there, my brain really kind of was having a hard time wrapping itself around the fact that I was even there and that I was seeing what I was seeing and I was experiencing what I was experiencing. It was absolutely phenomenal. Um, so, one of the things that I noticed also right away is just how open and friendly and open-hearted all the locals were. It was absolutely incredible, you know, and I was having a conversation with a black South African uh, who was very, very gracious and was answering all my questions. And, you know, I said, I really wouldn't blame you guys if when we got off the plane at the airport, if you were standing there and you just sort of kicked us back on the plane and said, you foreigners, you don't get to come anymore. We've had enough of your shit. You know, get out. You've done enough damage. Uh, and, um, but they don't, you know, and I thought that was really funny. Um, um, but, you know, we talked about it and the thing that I really noticed is that there's, there's such a tremendous amount of healing that has happened in a very, very short amount of time in South Africa. I mean, you know, apartheid didn't end very long ago and people are very willing to talk to you about it and to give you their impressions and, um, you know, there's so much that 
so much information that we really didn't get in the media that we really weren't told about that when you go there and you talk to people you get an impression of what it was really like and people really living in a war zone for a very very long time never really knowing if they were going to just get shot in the street and having to walk over bodies and having to flee and being in a constant state of fear and going from that to you know in a very short amount of time in a couple decades uh, going through a tremendous amount of healing and this doesn't mean that there's no problems left in South Africa or anything like that um, but it is so apparent everywhere you go and after talking to people and sort of you know reading the energy of it and then bouncing some of my you know impressions off of them I came to the conclusion that a big part of this healing has been facilitated by the fact that South Africans, and I'm told Africans as a whole, um, are people who don't really run away from issues. They face things, and I certainly could see that. There was nothing being brushed under the carpet, and nobody was talking about anything in a sort of accusatory way, even though they were talking about horrific things. There really wasn't an ac accusation, there was just a, a sort of a allowing it to bubble up and allowing it to come out and and but a recognition that these things happened that they were terrible um, but always doing it from a place of 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 a willingness to heal which was absolutely phenomenal to witness it was mind-blowing to witness to be able to see people who are so willing to step into healing and so willing to face their shit, to own their shit, you know, both white and black South Africans, um, um, was was incredible. It was an incredible display of what is possible when people open themselves up to healing and, and go ahead and, and face things instead of running away from them. So I think that, you know, there's a tremendous amount that can be learned by going to Africa. And one of the biggest conversations that I kept having with people is that, you know, we shouldn't go to Africa to try to fix them. Now, we can help, but if you want to help, you know, ask people what is it that you need from us and then give them that. Don't just arrogantly go over there and spread your help around, whether it's wanted or needed or, you know, not. Um, but I think that you know, we need to stop going to Africa to try to fix it, and we need to start going to Africa to learn, because there's a tremendous amount that we can learn there. The second thing that I noticed was when I was in the bush, and I'm going to try to say that throughout this video without giggling. I've been practicing, but you know, my the inner 13-year-old with the wicked sense of humor uh, and wants to giggle, <laughs> wants to giggle at that word every time. So as I was in the bush, um, I noticed, uh, you know, we interacted with these animals. We were able to see, you know, lions, both female and male, uh, elephants, giraffes, zebras, uh, impalas, rhinos, a whole family of rhinos, uh, buffalo, uh, you know, wildebeests. Uh, I, I'm running out like there just there's so many I can't even name them but those were the the really big ones cheetah saw a cheetah um, um, you know as as we were able to view these animals and they allowed us to view them you get hit with this absolute magnificence and this incredible power that you don't tend to connect with when you see an animal like this in a zoo or in some kind of enclosure. I think they have to be in their natural habitat and they have to be in their power for us to really feel this. And one of the first insights that I had was uh, as I had a, a bull elephant turn towards me and look me, you know, kind of straight in the eye and I was hit with all that energy, um, was I suddenly understood why people kill animals like this, why trophy hunters go into the bush, and I'll be totally honest with you, I haven't completely gotten past my judgment of trophy hunters. There's a little bit of a mm, twinge in there when I think about them, but I'm working on it. Um, but I understood why people kill animals like this, because if you have any unworthiness in you, if you have a lot of unworthiness in you, and you were faced with such power and such beauty and such magnificence, um, you're either going to shift up into that magnificence or you're going to have to try to crush it. 
And so I, you know, it is my opinion, the way I read the energy, that people who look at an animal like this and think, well, I have to kill you, um, you know, they're trying to conquer that, they're trying to own that, uh, because they don't feel like they have it in, in themselves, and to a large enough degree to create that kind of a reaction, but to a stubborn enough degree that they won't allow themselves to be uplifted by these animals. And what I was struck by was, just like the South African people, you know, with their willingness to step into healing again and again, these animals, um, make no mistake about it, they don't have to show themselves to humans. I mean, we were in a giant, you know, private animal reserve, 150,000 acres. Um, they had plenty of space to go to. They didn't need to be where we were. And they have all kinds of warning systems. You know, the birds and the, and the prey animals will warn each other. They know where we are and they know that we're there and they don't ever have to be where we are. They could avoid us, no problem. Um, and yet they don't. Uh, they show up again and again and allow us to see them. And, you know, I sent energy to every single animal that I saw, um, an energy of gratitude. Uh, and I got a few, you know, you're, you're welcome back. Um, and I became very, very aware that it was a very voluntary thing for them to let us see them. And it was an act of absolute grace because again, you know, we haven't really made it easy to connect with us. We've, we've been quite naughty in uh, hunting animals, you know, many of them to extinction uh, or, or nearly to extinction, um, and yet they continue to show up for us to mirror back to us our humanity or lack thereof. And they'll continue to do that until we get it. Uh, and so I was absolutely in awe and so appreciative of these animals and their willingness again to help us in our healing um, that, you know, I, I just, at times I was just tearing up with, with gratitude and with appreciation and, and while my mind was trying to wrap itself around what I was actually seeing because, oh my God, I, I, that's all I can say to you guys is, is if you get a chance to ever go on safari in Africa or South Africa or, you know, one of the surrounding countries, do it, do it, do it, do it. Like, I, I cannot recommend it highly enough and I'm definitely gonna go back. So the final big moment of clarity that I'm gonna share with you guys was one that was very personal for me. It was my aha moment. Uh, and it has to do with abundance. So I was able to uh, level up in a massive way in abundance. Um, and this is how it happened. It happened in the most amazing way. Like the universe is just the greatest. Um, so, uh, I'm a person, I'm a very, very social, I'm very, very extroverted a lot of the time until I'm not. And then I need time to sort of, um, you know, come back in and kind of cocoon a little bit and I need a little bit of solitary time and then I get quite introverted. Um, and so what happened is um, there was so much bombarding me and so much going on and I needed some time to process and I needed some time to be alone. And so I decided one morning instead of joining the group and going out with them, that I would spend a few hours by myself. And so everybody left on excursion and I stayed behind. And so here's what happened. So instead of getting up at 5.30 in the morning uh, and going out to the bush, I slept till 7.30, uh, which normally isn't a sleeping in time for me, but it was there, because uh, you gotta get out before it gets really hot. Um, and I had a private chef, a five-star chef cooked breakfast just for me. I had a private butler who was there just for me. Uh, there was, you know, a house manager that was there just for me. And then there was a whole bunch of other staff that was taking care of the place. And it felt a little bit like it was all just for me. Um, and it was amazing. So I'll be really, really honest with you, you know, warts and all. Uh, so the day before when I, you know, made the decision that I wasn't going to go the next morning, uh, the chef came up and it was all organized and uh, the chef came up and said, you know, what introduced himself and he said, what would you like to eat in the morning? You know, what would you like? What do you not like? And I swear to God, you guys, this actually came out of my mouth. I said something like, oh, you know, don't worry. I don't want to cause a fuss. <laughs> like, you know, just show me where the cereal is and I'll sit in the corner and I'll sadly eat my cereal bowl. I mean, I didn't really say that, but I, I said something along the lines of, you know, I don't want to you know, just something simple. You don't really have to do, you know, make a fuss for me. And he looks at me, you know, with his <laughs> look on his face and he looks at, says, 
I, I'm a five star chef. Like, can you just like let me do my thing, you know? And I had heard myself say it, and you know, when his reaction was this way, it really kind of made, you know, sort of hit me in the back of the head with a frying pan. I went, what am I doing? What? How am I, not, what? Like, why am I not just letting this in? So it really kind of, you know, opened my eyes. And so then I, you know, proceeded to challenge him and uh, tell him all the stuff I like and what I don't like. And, um, and you know, then he went off and made a magnificent breakfast for me the next morning. Um, and, you know, I sat there that day, I sat there that morning, allowing these people to support me and to serve me. And not because I needed them to, and not because I was overwhelmed and I couldn't take it and, you know, thankfully I have something, somebody to delegate to, but because it was so joyful and it was their joy and their pleasure to support me. And something opened up within me on a level that I had not reached before, where I let a whole new level of support in. And that evening when we were at dinner, some of the staff was having dinner with us and we were in the bush and there was the, you know, and they had set up the tables in the bush and, and, and a barbecue out there and they were grilling and um, honestly like five, six star service. And there's the African sunset, you know, which is ah, a magnificent. And, um, and we always went around at night, you know, and talked about our magic moments and what we found magical that day. And for me, it was, this, you know, feeling of being so supported by people whose joy it was to support me and to realize that, you know, it's not decadent to have a private chef and to have a butler and to have people sort of catering just to you. Um, and you don't have to, you know, be able to justify it by what I need this. Um, it's actually a beautiful dance when they're doing what brings them joy, which is to create peak experiences for people and, and you know, sort of fulfill their every wish. Um, and when they're doing that, when they're living in their joy, it supports me in living my joy and providing my value in the way that I can. And so it becomes this beautiful sort of symbiotic dance uh, instead of, you know, I'm paying somebody and they're doing my laundry for me. Uh, and maybe they don't want to, and maybe they do want to, you know, um, taking it completely out of that paradigm and into, you know, allowing people whose joy it is to support you to do so, so that, you know, it frees you up to fully live in your joy. And again, words fail here because it's not like I didn't know that before, but I got that on a completely different level and it just opened me up and it opened up my my heart and I, I ended up crying and and thanking the staff for you know showing for, for teaching for being my teachers for showing me what it's like to be so supported by people who adore doing that and they ended up crying and we're just you know uh, it was a beautiful moment there's a lot of crying um, but so much you know appreciation going on and so much celebration going on um, and it was incredibly healing. So I reached this whole new level of abundance, uh, along with tons of aha, you know, moments about my business and uh, flowing energy in different ways in my business and, um, and the next steps to come, which I've been sort of struggling with. Those of you who've been with me for a long time, you know that I've sort of been announcing, I'm gonna do this, and then announcing something else. I'm gonna do that, no wait, I'm gonna do that. And like nothing shows up. And it's because um, there was a little bit of a lack of clarity and a lot of energy wanting to rush into, you know, a direction that I wasn't yet quite open to. Um, and so I think that I opened up a lot of that in this trip. And so there's some good stuff coming your way. And I think it's actually going to all come now. Um, and I had a lot of, you know, insights and meditation that was like, it's time now. You need to, you know, it's time. Uh, and so I'm really, really excited about what's to come. Guys, honestly, I cannot recommend taking a trip like this enough. If you uh, ever get a chance, I was in the Medique uh, Reserve um, area or National Park, I think it's, uh, um, and I was in a resort called the Murukuru uh, Resort, uh, which I cannot recommend highly enough. I mean, these people really, really, really know what they're doing. Uh, and I was there with a group of nine other magnificent 
women. Uh, we call ourselves the Bush Witches. So there was a whole lot of, you know, hashtag Bush Witches uh, going on. And we were incredibly good at manifesting, you know. Uh, we would go out into the bush with the, with the game viewer. That's what the Jeeps are called, game viewers. They're these open Jeeps. Uh, and we would talk about some animal. And it wouldn't even matter what it is. It could be something obscure that someone's like, oh, I heard they have these. And within minutes, that animal would show up. And we just saw this happen again and again and again. And, you know, we were so good at manifesting animals that even the guides and the trackers were like, this is not normal. I mean, your group is like, holy crap. And, you know, of course. Um, and the whole thing just escalated and escalated and escalated. It just got better and better and better and better. I mean, we were driving, uh, you know, through the bush and suddenly you look over and there's a cheetah just sitting there, just sitting there waiting for us to look at it you know, uh, or turn another corner and there's a pride of female lions who've just taken down a giraffe and you're getting to watch them, you know, actually gorge themselves on this giraffe and, and which is not something that you get to see often. Uh, and even the, the trackers were taking selfies, you know, with this. So um, I do hope that um, I can put together a little video for you guys with some of the, the footage that we, you know, shot and some of the pictures that we took. I'm waiting on other people to share their pictures with me because I'm not a good photographer. And that really becomes apparent when you're trying to take pictures of like wildlife and stuff. So what I did is I just had the experiences while other people took pictures and they promised to share those pictures with me. So when they share them with me, I will share them with you because uh, I know a lot of you are interested in seeing them and then hopefully I'll be able to convey more of this energy from this honestly life-changingly awesome trip. So again, I cannot recommend it more high, uh, highly enough and hopefully even if you don't end up going to Africa, you have been inspired by my sharing of it uh, and also maybe have learned a few things and had a few aha moments today off of this video that I know I threw a lot at you there but um, I just wanted to give it all to you guys so there you go <laughs> so I want to thank you thank you thank you for bringing your light to the world you guys are awesome you don't even know how awesome you are ah! and uh, for this week I'm Melody Fletcher and I will see you next week bye <laughs>